So it's been about a year now since I last swapped out my uh, the cooling liquid of the K40 laser. And uh, as it starts to change colors, and um, I also think something is growing in there, I uh, thought I'd swap out the whole thing. And I want to show you how I do this. It's not, well, it's not complicated. Uh, but I want to show you what I use um, to make my own uh, cooling liquid. So um, therefore I need to get rid of all this stuff first. This is basically a simple PC um, water co cooling unit, you know, with a radiator behind it. And um, this little flow indicator, which I find very, very um, helpful because it shows you if actually there is cooling liquid passing through the laser tube. Because sometimes, you know, when the pump sucks on air or something, you know, the flow will stop. And this always um, gives you a nice indication if everything is alright. So um, I will basically start off, uh, yeah, pulling everything apart, taking out the hoses, taking off uh, this stuff, um, yeah, get rid of the cooling liquid and then uh, we will replace it and clean everything up. Now always unplug the components when you work on the unit. China brand machines may not be something you want to stick your fingers in while they are still plugged into the mains. I try to get out most of the fluid. I put the two connectors into a plastic bowl as they will continue to leak. I never made miso soup before, but I now know how to grow algae. Surprisingly, it does not stink. I think that's a good sign and proves that the chemicals I put in there are doing what they're supposed to. Even if it is not a highly toxic solution, I don't want to dump this into my yard or into the sewer, so I will dispose this accordingly. Some dish soap and the rack do the job of cleaning off all the residue before hosing everything down nicely. Time to have a look at the laser tube. Therefore I must remove the suction fan, that is pretty dirty as well. I will clean this up later on in the video. The laser tube looks alright, but you can clearly see the miso soup inside. It is not good having algae growth in your tube, but it's not catastrophic either. To get rid of all the sediments, I will hook everything back up and uh, use a mix of 50% tap water and 50% white vinegar. If you are setting up your laser for the first time, you want to make sure you buy silicon tubing instead of PVC, as you can squish it easily and break down the deposits inside without too much trouble. You see, there is still a lot of stuff inside the tubing. I recommend letting the pump run overnight to let the solution break down all the algae and bacteria. Now this is my setup. I have a 20 liter or 5 gallon reservoir with a medium size aquarium pump. From the reservoir the water gets pumped through the fan cooled radiator, passes the laser tube, then the flow indicator before it dumps back into the storage container. Now it is the next day and I start cleaning the fan. Baby wipes are working excellent for this job. I ordered some spare temperature sensors from eBay for around 1 US dollars a piece. The one I was using stopped working a while ago, even I can't see anything wrong with it.
Now the old sensor is soldered to the PCB. The replacements came with this little connector, so I decided to make use of them in case the sensor fails again in the future. I have these ribbon breadboard extension cables you can find as accessories for Adrenos. The pitch of the pins match up perfectly with the connector, so I simply use some shrink tube to fuse two of them together and make my own connector. I solder up the connections and double shrink tube them to make them look nice and neat. And there we go, back on track with the thermometer. Now let's get back to the pump. You can see how much dirt still came out of the system. Again I clean out the storage box and use a water bottle to flush the tubings. I repeat the step 3 to 4 times with uh, some hot water, making a seal with my fingers around the hose. As I don't have a compressor in the lab, I simply blow out most of the water. Now the manufacturer simply recommends water as cooling agent, but I recommend to at least use distilled water to avoid too much bacteria and chalky deposits over time in the system. If you want to keep the water in the system for more than 6 months, I recommend of adding radiator glycol. You get this stuff for house heaters. I read that in the US you can also find this as radiator coolant concentrate for car engines. For my setup, the simplest way of installing the temperature sensor is to attach it to the pump inlet. Eyeball the glycol to approximately 20 to 25%. Time to hook everything back up together and let the pump run. Last thing to do is get rid of the air bubbles. This step is very important as you don't want to have air in your laser tube. Some people loosen the screws of the laser tube brackets and turn the tube in order to release the air, but I think this is way too much work. Also you mess up the mirror alignment and need to readjust the inclination. The K40 isn't too heavy, so what I do is uh, simply raise the whole machine to an angle so the air can escape. You may need to repeat this procedure two or three times at the beginning as air bubbles will reform over the next few hours. And that was pretty much it. It took more time than cooking a miso soup, but therefore your laser stays cool for at least the next 12 months. I hope you enjoyed. Until then, see ya. Thank you.